It sounds like you have a very unique culture in your organization. We implemented Holacracy four years ago, which is a very different operating system about how organizations organize themselves. And it's much more about how do I create a self-organizing organization. So I don't have to be a heroic leader and try to influence my culture in that way. I give everyone the opportunity to say it's all ours and give everybody the freedom and create a structure that allows people to have the voice of recognizing what's on and what's off and have everybody participate in the culture itself. As opposed to making a generalization called, it, hey, everybody needs to be this kind of person to make this organization work. I don't think that's true. I think people need to be clear about what their agreements are, you know, where they're going, and then how they manage themselves and how they manage their agreements and the roles they take on in organizations. So how does it work? What does is, what is the structure of your organization look like? Well, again, we have a holacracy model, which means that we have what people would call departments or silos or whatever, we actually have circles. So we have circles that, that, that have themselves purposes and roles and output. It's a role-based organization, so we don't have bubbles on a chart. We just have roles and people fill those roles and are put in those roles and those roles have purposes themselves and they have accountabilities. So defining that and then we have all of that is a, it, it's structured to be a self-organizing organization so that you know, we have a whole process it was designed by the company Holacracy One that, that actually formulated this model. So a you know, brand new book out by Brian Robertson on this model itself. But it kind of turns the whole organizational operating system on its head. Uh, so there are no, yes, we have titles to the outside world because the outside world sort of needs that, but we don't have titles internally. We just have roles. I have six roles. You know, you know, Mike, who most people would call our CEO, has a role called strategy and viability, which one would normally associate with somebody who has a CEO role. but you know, that's, he's just accountable for that stuff. So we work it that way and there's a whole structure. We have governance meetings to, to organize how are we organized and are our roles okay. We have tactical meetings that say, okay, is there any work that needs to get unstuck or assisted? And then we have strategy meetings, call, are, we all, are we pointed in the right direction in terms of what we're doing? So, you know, good business stuff in a way, but it's not a top-down hierarchical uh, organization. Uh, it might sort of look like that, but it's, but it's actually quite different. It, it's really based on the working hypothesis that the, the organization itself has its own evolutionary purpose, and that's the driver of priorities, not the founder, not the owner. Well, there's a bigger thing going on here, and I had to be willing as founder and, and you know, primary owner to say, I will give decision-making accountability to the higher purpose of what this organization is about, and be willing to not pull the founder's card that's tricky business. So then you're not going to find a lot of organizations that probably would do it that way. But, they, but it's growing. Anybody wants to look up Holacracy, you'll see it's, you know, Zappos has started to do that. And some other organizations are really starting to fl flit around this and go, wow, this is very interesting because it seems to be what, the way the world is going. Because if you look at the trend of the world, it's getting flatter and flatter. And, you know, if I'm a boss, I don't have time to hold your hand. You, you need to be your own boss, I'm sorry. You know, and we need to work together more as partners. I mean, just even the fact that so many big corporations are calling their employees associates, you know, whether they, you know, it's still kind of pretty much the same thing, you know, as it was before, except the languaging is probably, you know, more directional, you know, about where things are going. You know, so we just partnered, we have an agreement about how we are gonna operate together. You handle you, I handle me, and we handle this, you know, then space together that we, that we intersect with. We just need to make sure that that's clear. Yeah, so your organizational structure somehow also sort of mimics your getting things done model. It does. It does in a way. As a matter of fact, the guys who built that structure were big GTD fans. As a matter of fact, they said, how do we create organizational mind like water? And it's really based on the same principle called, well, what's got your attention in the organization? To make sure that the whole organization is tuned up and has the capability to recognize what has your attention, how do we capture that? How does it get into the system? And at as low a level as possible, as fast as possible, get resolved. And that was the whole idea. If I were now consulting to you or your organization or anybody, I'd walk in and go, what's got your team's attention right now? By the way, the senior team, what's got the senior team's attention right now? Because whatever has your attention is hung up. That means there are decisions that haven't been made about it, or you don't trust that it's been operationalized in a trusted way. So it's very, you don't have to go very far to find out, call, what do you need to get more clarity in this organization? Just find out what's, <laughs> what's unclear, right? So in a way, it's not different, but it's building then the whole structure around that as the priority way to think and to operate, as opposed to, hey, somebody kind of smart 
you know, and, and uniquely had a way to kind of unstick things. No, that's the way it should be, the way the whole organization thinks.